Today we're going to do something a little different. I've got a cool story for you about a build-up and dyno test of a Ford Focus motor. Now you might be wondering why, why on earth would you, <laughs> would you do a Ford Focus motor, but the reality is that I put as much enthusiasm into that build as I do anything. As a matter of fact, I'm not really an LS guy or a, or a rotary guy or a big block Chevy guy or a modular Ford guy. I'm just an engine guy. So I want anything that I have, any engine that I see, I want to learn how to make more power and show you guys what works and what doesn't. And that's what I've done over the years, and I, and I like all of the engines. And the notion that one is better than the other, I think is just foolish. They're, they're all good, and we want to learn how to make, uh, how, how all of them can make more power. And that's what I did with this Focus. But the Focus thing is pretty cool, because there's, there's a good story, there's a good backstory for this thing. And way back when, uh, this is probably 15 or so years ago, the guys from Ford supplied, they gave me a Focus, which was kind of cool. And the reason that they did this is because I was writing a book on focus performance. And if you've seen any of the other 10 books that I've written, this focus book followed basically the same format. So each chapter, there was an individual chapter basically on one of the subsystems of performance. So for instance, there's a chapter on air intakes and mass air meters, one on throttle bodies and intake manifolds, one on cylinder heads and camshafts and exhaust systems. And obviously there's chapters on turbocharging and supercharging and nitrous oxide. And so we fill those chapters with tests on those individual subjects. So it's a lot of cool stuff. So whether we have a Focus or a modular Ford or a small block Ford or obviously a ton of LS and Honda stuff as well. So I was doing this book on Focus performance and, I, and Ford supplied me this little ZTEC Focus. Now it was a cool little car and I actually really liked it. It did, it was kind of cool and I could compare it to a Civic hatchback that I also had, which was also good. Now the Civic is much lighter than the Focus. The Focus was, you know, a bit heavier. It did have a two liter motor, but it wasn't a real high specific output. That ZTEC, you know, didn't make a ton of power. And back in the day, when you're driving around in this Focus, you're actually fairly easy prey for the Honda guys because the two liter Focus obviously had a little more displacement than your typical B series B16A or B18C or, or Type R or any sort of LS VTEC hybrid. So those guys would probably make short work of a guy driving a Focus. But when all of this turned around is after I put an F-Max turbo kit on my Focus. Then with seven or eight pounds, it was a completely different story. <laughs> so then I could hold my head high driving the focus because once we put boost to it it really worked out well but after I did that and we eventually turned this thing up to I think I, I'm certain that we made over 300 horsepower to the tire with the turbo system but then I, I made the mistake of going visiting Kenny Duttweiler who is like you know a, a thousand different kinds of awesome but he was also doing some focus testing back then and he had a, a turbo header a dedicated long tube header, which is fairly commonplace now, but back then it, it was like seeing, you know, <laughs> like seeing a, a pot of gold. It was awesome. So it was, the, it was this dedicated turbo header, and I had the guys from, I think that this was Innovative Turbo, uh, did this system. So I conned them into letting me use one and test it, and we put it on there and we put a little bit bigger turbo on there. I think we turned this, the, the stock motor that I had up to about. 350 or 360 of the tires, which at the time was, was fairly good. And it was a lot of fun driving around like that. But I decided, you know, you know what I need to do is instead of just running around with a stock motor, I need to do a dedicated build on this thing. So I need to, I need to see what I can really do with this thing. I want to make some power with it. So it turned into, as all of these things do, <laughs> it turned into quite the, the avalanche of like headaches and problems and time. But eventually what we did was I talked to the guys from Sean Highland and they supplied a Focus short block, which is really cool. It was the stock block and crank, but it had four rods and pistons. And with the factory head, it was about nine to one, which was you know plenty safe for what we were doing. I actually, I probably would have run higher compression had I thought about it, but back then that's what we did. And we combined that with a cylinder head from the guys at uh, Focus Central, Dennis Hilliard up there. He, he does good stuff and they'd been doing a, a bunch of all motor stuff with their deals. They were making composite intake manifolds and really kind of doing some cool stuff. But they had good ported heads and they had camshafts so we stuck, uh, we stuck some revised camshafts in and I'll go ahead and put the cam specs on from the camshafts that we put in. We also had cam sprockets and we got to play with that a little bit to dial the camshafts in. And then we tried to actually a couple of different manifolds and the one I ended up going with to make the big numbers was an aluminum intake manifold from the guys at Ford Racing. They actually did a dedicated uh, ZTEC 
a two liter focus intake manifold, then it worked fairly well. Now, it, it differed from the factory, you know, super long runner intake that they use on the factory focus. It was short runner, it was aluminum, so it moved the power band up, and in that focus book, I, I go over all these different intake manifolds that we tested to show the effect that runner link has, just like we always do. But, so we combined that with a 65 millimeter throttle body, and then we had this tubular header, and then on that tubular header, I put a, I think it was a GT66 turbo, again, from uh, Innovative Turbos, and it was a T3, T4 hybrid, and it worked very well. It was good for probably back then. I, I'm thinking it was like a 600 horsepower turbo, which worked very well. And what, what, what I did was to run it on the dyno, we obviously naturally ran into a few problems. <laughs> we needed to have obviously a lot more clutch, so we had to put a lot more clutch in it. And to really get this thing to run, I would have had to completely redesign the fuel system, which was kind of a problem because I didn't want to have this motor in there all the time. This was my daily driver. I wanted to basically put the stock motor back in with the F-Max turbo kit and drive it around and have a, a good, happy, boosted Z-Tech focus and be able to like have fun with it and stuff and, and have it work every day. So this was a temporary motor that I was actually going to give to the guys at Focus Central and let them go out and drag race it because I wanted to see what this thing would actually do and make and it was making good power. So what we did was instead of redesigning the fuel system and, and doing all the stuff that we needed to do to make this motor work, what I did was we put the motor in and then I just built a dedicated fuel system right next to the chassis dyno. We built a cart with a fuel cell and a big pump and a Kenny Bell Booster pump and a return line and all that stuff. So we made all of that work just for the dyno. Now I did a similar thing for this combination with the intercooler. I had a, a Vortec air to water intercooler and we ran that, we had used it for the Civic on their, on their dedicated blower kits for the B-Series stuff. So we ran that, that intercooler, and this way I could, on my cart, where my fuel system was, I also had ice water and a pump and everything, so I could pump ice water through the intercooler, which is obviously always beneficial, it helps the thing make power and cool the thing off. And we also just ran a, a an exhaust and downpipe out, and it, I think it was a three inch downpipe, so it had, you know, it had enough exhaust flow. I never measured back pressure, which I kind of should have, but I didn't do it back then, and I, and I kind of wish I would have. So we had our complete turbo setup, we had the air to water intercooler with ice water, we were running race gas, and then the final element was the guys from Pectel who were doing a standalone, man, you might be getting some wind noise because we're getting a little bit of breeze here. The guys from Pectel did a, a dedicated standalone management system. And luckily my buddy Nathan came in and did some tuning with the Pectel on the, on the chassis dyno. We were using the guys at Powertrain, that's Steve over there who, who <laughs> I bugged for years and years doing a ton of testing. I was there all the time just, hey Steve, come on, I need to get some dyno runs. And he was nice enough to put up with all my BS for years and years and years. So I, I thank him for that. But we got to run the focus on the chassis dyno there. And Nathan did the tuning with the Pectel so we were able to use the a standalone management system. We put big injectors in it. I think that they were, I want to say that they were 75 or 80 pound injectors maybe, and they may have been even bigger than that. Um, but what we did was we used uh, an electronic wastegate controller on this combination, and we had a, I think it was a tile wastegate on it, a single tile wastegate, and it, so we had pretty good boost control. We could control it with a Pectel. And so what we did was just started making runs. and. The reason that I did all this and the, the reason that I went to such big trouble making the, the Z-Tech motor was because obviously anything that you do to the NA motor, you know, you get benefits under boost. So if we make more power NA, then we have make more power at any kind of boost level. And I didn't want to run a million pounds of boost because obviously if we take a stock Z-Tech motor, which made about 105 or 110 por horsepower at the tire, you know, <laughs> how much boost would we have to run to make a reasonable amount of power? It was a ton. So what we did was put this other combination together with forged internals and ported head and cams and stuff to get the NA power up and then we added the boost. So after we added the boost, we started turning it up and up and up and up and it was making good power. And we eventually ran and I'll go ahead and show you. Unfortunately, I don't even have access to the chassis dyno information anymore. I can just take this excerpt from my, the book that I did. But we ended up making over 500 horsepower. We made 514 and over 400 foot pounds of torque. Thanks to to the, that, that short runner intake, we were able to rev this thing out to around 7,500 RPM. Now, 
the, the thing I, when, in looking back at this stuff, and, and we, ran, we ran it as high as 29 pounds of boost, which it took a lot of boost to make this kind of power on this focus motor, because it wasn't a, a, a super successful, like super powerful NA combination. It wasn't like your typical two liter, you know, B series Honda engine back in the day. It didn't make that kind of power. Now, I'm not saying it couldn't, and I'm not saying guys haven't done that since then, but back then, this combination didn't really do that. Not at, not at nine to one, and not with a cam, and the combination of heads and everything that we ran on it. Guys probably make a lot more power like that, and that's what I'm getting to, is when we look back at that stuff, first of all, you look back at the crazy stuff that you do on the chassis dyno with the fuel system on a cart and the intercooler stuff on a cart and the Pectel stuff on the cart. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do just to get the numbers, which is a lot of fun, and it's, it's great being with those guys doing that kind of stuff. But the other thing is, you know, you got to figure out why do we need this much power and we were doing this because i was going to take this motor and put it in a drag race car i wouldn't want that much power in my driver especially with that clutch i mean driving around with that clutch it was a, it was a putt clutch it wasn't sprung you know it was just a chattery thing and it it hooked up and and would hold the power but it just wasn't something you'd want to drive around in but it did make good power but it made power like at 29 pounds of boost and i look back now and think why did we need to run like two bar on there, three bar on this thing, two bar of boost to make that kind of power. This thing should have made a lot more power. So I always look back at these things, whether it's this Focus or some of this modular motor stuff that I've done or some of the Honda stuff that I've done. And I think, now I wish I could go back because we could do so much more now. And that's the problem with looking back. When I like the test that I did recently on the L98 on the tune port stuff, it's like, hey, you can make so much more power now with anything else. Yes, you can, but back then, that's what we did, and it's the same thing with this Focus deal. It was a lot of fun, and we ended up, after we got done with the dyno test, we all jumped around and said, yeah, yeah, we made over 500 horsepower at the tire. This is awesome. This is the fastest thing in the world. You know, guys were probably doing a lot more than that. But then we took the motor out, and I took it to the guys at Focus Central and let them put it in their car and hopefully go racing and stuff with it. And then I put the stock motor back in and put the turbo stuff back on, and then I drove it around forever like that. And it was a, it was a lot of fun, and it was a much better car with the turbo stuff on it and driving around on the stock motor because that just wasn't a good combination. So I, <laughs> I guess what we're getting to with all of this is when you're building a combination like this, and obviously looking back, we have hindsight is 2020, but when you're building a combination, make sure that you know what you're getting into. First of all, this was a lot of work and it was a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so know what you're getting into and what you're gonna do. And also, know what the application is going to be. Because if you're building a motor like this and they yeah, I want to have a 500 horsepower street motor. Well, the problem is as you go up and up in power, like we did with this focus thing, <laughs> you start making you start making sacrifices. You start making trade-offs. Like the clutch was just unbearable. The, the camshafts that we ran, this thing was super loud. It was just not a good come and then and then the intercooler didn't fit under the hood and you know there were a lot of things that we would have had to do to make this thing work and then in the end it wouldn't have been a good car to drive around it would have been great at the track it would have, you know made a ton of power and if that's what you wanted that's fine but just know that going in whether you're doing an ls or a chevy or ford or whatever it is we, we tend to, and, I, and I'm guilty of this too, and I'm sure you guys are, we tend to get greedier and greedier. Oh, if, you know, if I could make like 500 at the tire, that would be great. But you know what would be better than 500 is like 600 at the tire would be even better. And that's what happened with this. When I first started all of this, we were gonna try to make, oh, okay, we wanted 300 at the tire. And as soon as we did that, it's like, well, I'm gonna put a little bit bigger turbo on. Yeah, well, let's, let's make a little bit more. And then we made 365 and I'm thinking, you know, I just want, if we could just do 400, 400 is the number. If I could get 400 at the tire, that would be awesome. It'd be cool to have a 400 horsepower focus. And then we started doing that. And I'm like, you know, really 400 is nothing. If we're gonna go to all this trouble and build a dedicated motor, I think 500 should be the number. And that's what happens. <laughs> and that's what happened with this focus project. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Hope you enjoyed the story. This was a cool build. Lots more of this stuff coming up. I'll keep testing.